and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. There are a lot of exciting things happening in agriculture right now. One of them is the new Roundup Ready to Extend trait. We'll talk about how to use this trait to fight resistant weeds on your farm. We also want to help you cut your costs on your farm when it comes to fertility. But one of the keys there is knowing how to read the soil test. So today we want to focus on phosphorus. How do you read that phosphorus test? What does it mean? We'll talk about that later in the show. We've got a tough to control weed of the week for you, but first here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we want to talk a little about drainage, farm drainage and specifically the Ag PhD drainage calculator. All right, if you're thinking about doing some drainage on your farm, uh, there are a lot of different tools that you can use to help you figure out size of pipes and, and these types of things. Well, many of them are old school slide calculators. And you think, <laughs> man, yep. where is that calculator number one? And then when I find it, oh, how do I get that darn thing lined up right? Yep. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just do it right on your phone? Right, and you can. So over the last couple of years, we developed the Ag PhD drainage calculator. It's a free download for your smartphone or your tablet. All you have to do is just open this drainage calculator up. I just did it on my phone here, and you've got the choice of you can calculate acres drained, calculate pipe diameter, calculate pipe amount, calculate the slope, calculate the pump size. So a lot of different things you can look at, and it's really handy because this is something that just exactly what Darren was talking about here. I used to have to do when I'm designing these systems for our own farm. Okay, let me pull out the slide rule. I got to go this many feet and this many acres and. Uh, yeah, it's way simpler with the app. Now you may just think, well, this is common sense. Water flows downhill. So if my pipe is sloping that way, I'm getting rid of the water. But how much water are you getting rid of? Because when we look at, let's just say you're trying to drain 40 acres off, well, that's a lot of gallons of water that are going to be moving through those pipes at times. So getting things sized appropriately is really critical to make your system work right. All right, so just as a quick example, Darren said 40 acres. So on the drainage calculator, I punch up 40 acres. Let's say I've got a 0.5% grade. You have to plug that in. And then whatever you want for drainage coefficient. Let's say we want to have really great drainage at a half an inch per acre per day. In other words, what that means is we're getting rid of half an inch of water per acre per day. So it, it's like you got a half inch of rain over the course of a single day. This is getting rid of a half inch of rain. So I punch that in and this is saying for 40 acres, I've got to have a 10 inch minimum pipe diameter in single wall or an eight inch for dual wall. But you know, the other thing you can do is you could put two mains out there. You've got a lot of different choices. So let's say you didn't have the ability to put 10 inch in. You could certainly put a smaller pipe in if you run multiple main lines. But that's the thing, being able to figure those things out on the fly is so important because a lot of times you may get a system designed and you're out trying to put it in and you realize, whoa, this hill is a little bigger than I thought. Or, man, this is a long run out here and it looked smart on paper, but it doesn't make so much sense once we're out in the field. Or like in the example Darren just gave, uh, I had to go 10 inch pipe. Well, I can't put 10 inch pipe in, I can put eight inch pipe in. So what I do is I go calculate acres drained. I can say my eight inch, diameter pipe and we're back to that 0.5 percent grade drainage coefficient half an inch i calculate it that'll actually do 35 acres so it's really close to the 40 acres on that eight inch line so either you have a little bit less than a half inch drainage coefficient or if you want to again you certainly could put in a second main line well, drainage is certainly going to be a hot topic this fall, and certainly on our farm, we're going to be improving drainage in some fields. The payback on that is so quick that even in today's economy, when you talk to bankers across the country, they're very excited about drainage improvements on land because it reduces the risk on the farm and it returns money quickly. In just a year or two, in many cases, you're going to get your money back on that drainage investment. Uh, bankers are looking for things like this to put their money into on the farm. So certainly if you're looking at drainage, the Ag PhD drainage calculator is a great tool to help you. Well, another thing that can help you if you want to earn more money on your farm is improving weed control, especially if you've got our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? I 
love the fact that we get very little grain loss from the head. Other brands, other corn heads, we've seen that um, up to three, four bushel per acre in some instances where we have some dry corn. We're growing as much corn as we can. We don't want to be leaving this out in the field at harvest time. So the fellow's done a nice job of making sure we're capturing almost every kernel that we can. So yes, I would recommend the fellow head to other farmers. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. We've been dealing with AgriLiquid a little over seven years. I was skeptical, to be honest, but I watched the results from several clients. Those results were increased production and reduction in input cost. With AgriLiquid, we saw an increase in the size of the initial root mass. For ranchers, that means forage production a lot quicker. AgriLiquid works. The bottom line is profitability. With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. Over the last few months, Darren and I have been talking to farmers all over the country that say, I gotta cut costs, I wanna cut costs. My banker says I gotta cut costs. But here's the problem, what you cut actually could hurt your bottom line, not help it. So the key thing is understanding what you should cut and what you shouldn't cut. The best thing to do in terms of fertility is take a look at a soil test. And when we talk about soil tests, one of the most important things on there is the measure of phosphorus, the amount of phosphorus you have in your soil. But there are different types of phosphorus tests and it can get a little complicated, so we want to talk through that today. Well, you're exactly right, Brian. For, for many farmers that I've talked to this summer, it's been you know what, when I get to this fall and I'm putting the fertility out, I'm going to have to look at cutting P and K. Those are just huge expenses on my farm. And I say, well, hold on. They're not expenses. They're investments in your next crop. And when we look at soil test levels, certainly there are some areas of fields and even some whole fields where, you know what, we do have enough phosphorus. We really don't need any for this next crop. Uh, we would be fine making some cuts there. But in other cases, those levels are low enough that if we don't put the phosphorus out there this year, we're going to suffer in yield. And so it's one of those things where by not spending $10, all of a sudden you're going to lose $20. In soil pH situations above 7, so if you've got a 7.0 or above, you want to look at the Olson test. That's otherwise known as the bicarbonate P test. And that will tell you available phosphorus. That's, in other words, what's ready to go for your crop right away. Okay, in the lower pH, below 7, then we're going to look at both the Bray P1 and the Bray P2, so weak Bray and strong Bray. With the Bray tests, there's a big difference here. The P1, or weak Bray, that's going to tell you what's available right now. The P2, or strong Bray, is going to tell you, well, 
how much is available now plus some of what's in reserve. So in other words, if let's say you had 100 for a P2 test, that tells you you've got a lot total in the soil, but you only have 10 for a P1, that tells you not very much of what's in the soil is available. You've got some tie-up issues going on for one reason or another, and then we need to talk through why. So in addition to looking at those tests, we also have to look at how much organic matter do you have in your soil, because with that organic matter, you can basically figure you're gonna get four to seven pounds of phosphate out of each percent of organic matter due to organic matter mineralization each year. So that's just something you've got to factor in there in addition to the, either the Olson test or the Bray test when you look at available P. This is why absolutely for this season, we're looking at short term and hey, what's going to be out there and how do we figure out how much more that we have to add but also looking at this organic matter component that Brian just brought up, that's why we're focused on our farm on building organic matter levels over time. So you don't wanna make decisions this year that, you know what, we're gonna deplete that organic matter and we're gonna bring it back down because it takes quite a while to build that back up. The other thing is we don't wanna completely deplete our soils of fertility because all of a sudden it takes a while to build the microbial life back up. They need nutrients out there too. So in other words, what Darren is saying is as a general rule, we will tell you first, before you do anything else, before you even look at the soil test, let's talk about how much crop you're gonna raise and look at the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app. You can plug in whatever crop you have, your yield goal, and that will tell you how much phosphorus in total you need, or I should say how much phosphate. So on most soil tests, you will see a phosphorus number. You need to multiply that number times 2.3. So for example, if your phosphorus level showed 10, you multiply that times 2.3, you actually have 23 parts per million on phosphate. So there's a big difference there, and most people are gonna talk about, hey, your crop needs X amount of pounds, and they'll just say phosphorus, what they mean is phosphate. So when you look at the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app, it'll tell you specifically phosphate. This is how much phosphate you need, not how much phosphorus. All right, so if you wanna spend less money on phosphorus, you determine, hey, I need some, but how do I do it economically this year? There's a couple of things you can do. Certainly banding is a lot more efficient than broadcasting. Let's just take a 30 inch row, for example, and, and a crop like soybeans that we're standing in. When you've got 30 inch row soybeans, how well are those roots really gonna reach 15 inches out to the side and grab everything out there? Especially if you're in a year where you're challenged for moisture. By putting all that phosphorus closer to the root system, you're able to get more of it in and the tests for years and years have shown our efficiency goes up dramatically moving phosphorus applications closer to the row. So whether you're putting it right in furrow with a real safe liquid product, like a pro germinator, for example, that we use on our farm, that'd be one way to do it. You can certainly go over in a two by two or even in strip till, you could really use just about any kind of phosphorus program. Maybe you're using MAP or DAP in the fall. You could band that down six or eight inches below the row. And guess what? Your root system is going to grow right through that next spring and summer and, and grab most of that phosphorus. Okay, so we'll talk more about phosphorus applications on later shows. Today, we got to focus here on how do you read that test. So take your number. Again, let's just use for easy figuring. We'll say 10. Okay, let's say it's 10 parts per million. That's phosphorus. You've got to multiply that times 2.3. Now you're up to 23. You've got to multiply that times 2. And the reason why you have to multiply times two is we're going to assume you've got a six inch soil test. If you had a 12 inch soil test, you'd multiply times four. Where this comes from is in six inches of soil across an acre, that's roughly two million pounds. We're talking parts per million. So you've got to multiply your number times two if you have a six inch test. So 10 times 2.3 is 23, 23 times two is 46. So you've got 46 pounds of phosphate that's available right now. And then if you look at your organic matter, let's say again that you've got 5% organic matter, five times four, that's gonna give you another 20 pounds right there. So you've got 20 plus 46, you got 66 pounds. So I know we ran through this quickly, but here's the thing. If you need more information on this, you can certainly get in touch with us at agphd.com. Also, we do take live phone calls every day on our radio show, so call us at 844-44-AG-PHD every afternoon, and we can certainly talk through this with you. Otherwise, come to an Ag PhD Soils Clinic. They're free, we'll show you how to read a soil test this winter, and then you get some hands-on experience with it, but this is stuff you have to know. A lot of people don't know how to read a soil test, and so then they either end up overspending on fertilizer, or they underspend and they miss great opportunities to make money on the farm. Managing the phosphorus levels on your farm is very important, Managing weeds is too. We'll show you how to stop our tough weed of the week coming up later in the show. 
Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit copperheadag.com. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. We farm mostly soybeans, uh, probably a third of it is corn. Uh, we switched to the Liberty Link trait about five years ago. We've had real good success with it. Uh, it's helped us control our weeds. Our biggest weed challenge would be the uh, pigweed. And we get our fields clean when we start. And then we usually try to come back 28 to 30 days after planting with our Liberty and a post emerge. And the Liberty is just easier and we don't have to be a chemist to mix our chemical. Very simple, and it works. It's all done real well, and we're just very happy with the Liberty Link system. The Liberty Link system, a simply better solution. Now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee, because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. Attention farmers, are you able to sell your grain for a premium? Your local AgriDry dealer can show you how farmers are seeing a return on their investment with AgriDry products this year. Higher test weights, even distribution of foreign material, and target moisture premiums are all benefits AgriDry customers are seeing on their grain sales tickets this year. Are you ready to start making more money on your stored grain? Visit AgriDryLLC.com to find your local dealer today. Roundup ready to extend beans. Are you going to plant them on your farm or not? That's really the big question. Well, we're standing in a field right now of Roundup ready to extend soybeans, and I am very, very excited about this new technology. When we can spray dicamba post emerge in soybeans, Resistant weeds are really going to be scared. Well, yeah, but here's the whole thing. It's not like when Roundup first came out. When Roundup first came out, guys were spraying two foot tall weeds and it was taking them down. That is not going to happen with dicamba. We're very concerned about the weed height. You need that weed height to be four to six inches tall and then, yes, you're going to have good control. So when we start talking about things like water hemp and palmer pigweed, how long is that weed going to be four to six inches tall? Not long. Our point is, we love the new Extend Beans. That's where the best genetics are. You've got an option post-emerge that you didn't have otherwise. The ability to spray dicamba, assuming that gets labeled for spring. But here's the whole thing. We still are gonna strongly encourage you, put a pre-emerge herbicide down. The pre-emerge herbicides keep coming down in price. Use a pre, it's really going to help your overall weed control. Okay, let me speak to the seed genetics really quick and then I wanna talk about how dicamba works so you kinda understand how you're gonna use this technology on your farm. So in terms of the seed genetics, the breeders have been working with Roundup Ready to Extend since about 2006. Since before Roundup 2s even came out, the breeders were already working on this Extend trait. So don't think, well, it's a brand new trait. They're probably not gonna have any good yielding material for a few years. Wrong answer. There's some excellent yielding material that's out right now. And also the disease package that, that has been able to be put into these varieties is tremendous. Uh, in fact, this year with our late season observations, we're seeing equal sudden death syndrome tolerance to the Roundup 2s, if not better. In many cases, we're seeing better tolerance to SDS and some of the other diseases. We're seeing a high level of RPS3A phytophthora genes. We're seeing some root knot nematode genes. Uh, we're seeing STS or sulfonylurea tolerance in some of the varieties. We're seeing all these traits that you've come to love in the Roundup 2s, we're seeing them in the Extend Beans. So you're not giving up anything in terms of yield or right. disease tolerance. All right, now real quick, what were you talking about with dicamba? How do you want to use it? 
All right, when we think about dicamba and how it works, it works differently than Liberty, for example. So many farmers I talk to say, well, I could go Liberty. Okay, you could. With Liberty, that's an excellent product. You've got to spray about 20 gallons of water and you have to have very fine droplets. You have to get great coverage with Liberty if you want it to work. With dicamba, on the other hand, we want ultra coarse droplets. We want great big droplets to try and prevent any drift. We don't want physical drift with dicamba. We're also concerned about volatility. So the spray additives that you're putting in, we don't want you to put ammonium sulfate in with dicamba applications. It makes it more volatile. This is one of the reasons why we've had issues with volatility with dicamba in the past is AMS can be a detriment. It helps with weed control but it's a detriment in terms of volatility. So we're gonna use ultra coarse droplets with dicamba. Now it doesn't take great coverage with dicamba to work. You do need coverage, but you don't have to cover every speck of the, the entire plant to get it killed because dicamba will move around inside. All the right, plant. we do think that Extend is a great option for you. You absolutely could plant it. We've been planting a lot of it on our farm the last couple of years, but it's not the only option. You could certainly go Liberty too if you have Roundup resistant weeds. Well, with both Liberty and dicamba, uh, neither one's going to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what will, coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Russian olive. All right, Russian olive is a tree. And it's not often where we have a tree that's a big weed problem, but in this case, it certainly can be. Here's the issue that we have with Russian olive too. A lot of times you're gonna find it near water. So you have to be a little bit careful with what you wanna spray. For example, the best tree killer that there is, is Tordon. I love Tordon for controlling trees and brush. That's awesome. But the problem with Tordon is, it can also kill fish. So you've got to keep it away from water. So if you're near a river or you're near a lake, do not be using Tordon. What you want to do instead with these Russian olives is just cut them off near ground level and then you could put in some other product to try to kill that. Now, surprisingly, glyphosate injected, if you take a syringe and inject glyphosate into that Russian olive tree, it actually can do pretty well. The other thing that works pretty well is the old arsenal. Uh, we used to buy a product called Contain, and that was the same thing as Arsenal. It's a ground sterilant that has good activity on Russian olive. There aren't a lot of herbicides that do well on it. Remedy is okay, but it's not phenomenal. It's just that, hey, if Russian olive is away from a river or a lake or any type of water, use Tordon. That absolutely will be your best thing. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. I trust Agro Liquid because I've seen the results and they're positive and they work on my farm, they work in my environment. When I started farming, we was farming around 125 acres and now we're up to around 1,700 acres. I think I was recognized as the Tennessee Young Farmer by being a leader in the community and also being innovative. I'm always looking for new products, but I got to make sure that those products are sustainable. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old and I would love for them to farm this land. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. 
Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. I love the fact that we get very little grain loss from the head. Other brands, other corn heads, we've seen that um, up to three, four bushel per acre in some instances where we have some dry corn. We're growing as much corn as we can. We don't want to be leaving this out in the field at harvest time. So the fellow's done a nice job of making sure we're capturing almost every kernel that we can. So yes, I would recommend the fellow head to other farmers. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Downed corn is tough to harvest, and what do you do after harvest to clean things up? I'll discuss it in today's Iron Talk. First of all, if you have corn yet to harvest and it's laying down, the new Gladiator head from Capello is something to look at. The way it pulls corn in to prevent loss, plus the speed and versatility moving any direction through the field, is just fabulous. Now, if your harvest is already done, your nightmare may still not be over. Now you've got to prep that field for the next crop. Here are a few observations from downed corn this fall. Long stalks laying every which way are a challenge in many types of operations. And strip it could even be a challenge in fields where the tops fell off the corn. Dealing with those longer pieces compared to where a chopping corn head had everything sized up to just a few inches long can be tough. Coulter carts of various kinds or vertical tillage will do a nice job sizing that residue up so it flows right through your next machine much better. The True Tandem 335 Barracuda from Case IH is really impressive in the field. Some farmers also like the individual coulters of a Salford. Either way, it's a valuable pass through the field. Then you can follow up with your strip till, no till, or conventional till, depending on your situation. Now, stock route was the culprit. Rotating away from corn next year is a good strategy. On a positive note, adding a fungicide like xanthian in furrow really helped with disease prevention. In some cases, the planting population was just too high for the fertility levels in the field. Make adjustments to your fertility program and planting populations going into next year to avoid a similar fate. Focus on potassium, manganese, and copper for better standability. Down corn is bad. There's still time to clean things up this fall or early next spring. Vertical tillage is often a big help. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, that's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show, where we take your live phone calls each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. It takes good management practices and care to accomplish this. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.